many people have been in contact with us, checking in on how our warranty issues and repairs are progressing and if any offers of assistance have been made, often with the information that a future boat purchase is being considered. So I hope to answer some of those questions now. Leopard and Robertson and Kane recently reached out and asked us for a meeting which we attended. Robertson and Kane offered a couple of solutions during the meeting that in our opinion did not take into consideration our interests or our reasons for purchasing the boat. After extensive post-meeting discussions with the various parties involved, we decided to work directly with Travelopia and Leopard, who we believe are most aligned with our interests moving forward, which we appreciate. Robertson and Kane agreed to provide them with the support needed to get us back out on the water and improve our experience in some way. As it stands now, we're just waiting for technicians and parts to arrive from Travelopia and Leopard to assist with new and overdue warranty repairs. We are allowing Leopard time to attempt to rectify our overall experience before we have to leave Trinidad and head west to Panama due to the hurricane season. We still have not signed a non-disclosure or similar, possibly to our own financial detriment. So what you see in future will be an unrestricted but fair review of our overall experience. I'm sure that viewers following along can appreciate that we're not profiting from these videos or trying to be sensationalist. And this entire situation has been nothing but detrimental to our personal incomes. We have heard that there have already been very positive changes occurring for future owners regarding interactions with Robertson and Kane in Cape Town and more open communication which some of the owners in Cape Town right now have attested to. We are very pleased to see improvements slowly occurring as a result of our experience and we hope this trend continues. Our interactions with Travelopia continue in a positive direction and we will update you as significant progress has a chance to occur. In the interest of working towards our common goal of getting the boat out of Trinidad as fast as possible, we've attempted to do as much prep work as possible for the upcoming warranty rectification. The advice that we've received in regards to the crossbeam specifically is that it needs to be removed for the repairs to take place, something we have attempted to assist with. Another day of the strange sleeping positions of Rose. Good morning. Ooh, the sun is already out and it's bright even though it's like 7.30 in the morning. So another day here in Trinidad, another day of work. To be able to get the crossbeam out, first I've got to clear everything off the trampolines. We've got to remove the anchor bridle and the Code Zero setup and remove the trampolines as well then it's actually going to be a crane operation so it's quite involved just to remove this crossbeam but once it's done then the final plans for fixing it can be formulated. You need to clean the edge of that then I'll do that today as well. We're going to have to undo that electrical as well. <coughs> the Dyneema. No, the uh, power supply for the nav lights. Yeah. How hard is that going to be? Not hard. Easier than trying to keep your glasses on your face. Yeah. <laughs> Tynan's just done doing the shackle first and then after that we'll have to untie the Dyneema. You guys put that Dyneema on in Cape Verde, did you, or before that? No, it was Cape Verde. There were 30 knot winds and what was happening is um, when the boat was like crab walking in the wind, it was twisting. The, the load on the pin was so great that the shackle was moving. Oh, the and it slowly pin, undid itself. And it slowly undid itself. How did you guys get it back on? Um, Trent drove the boat forward. I did a like constriction knot on here and then tied it to the cleat. Yep. So it was tight from here down, but this was slack. And then but you then could get I it back on. We could get a, a replacement shackle, pull it on. Uh, oh, because the shackle fell in the water too. Yeah, and then that's why we put the four ton Dyneema on. As a backup. Double looped it. Yeah.
That one was easier. Because I'm not having to do it from the back. Yeah. Oh, I see. We've had a chat with the guys here at the shipyard who, <laughs> who deal with the crane and what they suggested was the best way to do the crossbeam wasn't actually a crane, it was with a forklift which makes a lot of logical sense to us but then because Trent and Tynan have experience driving forklifts, especially Tynan, uh, they were more than happy just to let us borrow it and they have just dropped it off. I know that they're qualified and experienced, but I cannot believe they've just been given the keys to a forklift. <laughs> Is this how much you miss driving Nissans? Yeah. I swear, people are gonna see them driving that and assume they've stolen the gaze or something. But yeah, so they've lent us the forklift for the weekend and that way we can just take our time and slowly get everything to where we want it to be and carefully drop the cross beam out of the boat. So yeah, that'll be the big job for this weekend. And then come Monday, hopefully, we'll be able to just give them back the keys and the cross beam will be on the ground. We'll see though. How was that? I was what, sorry? <laughs> I can't believe they gave you the keys to it. Oh, it's certified. Were people looking at you guys like you stole it? No, but you know, like, I can't yes. believe we had to carry our own box. <laughs> so you guys are just gonna leave that there till tomorrow? Yeah. All right, I'll finish uh, doing up the front here. Today we're just getting to the last bit of prep work that we didn't finish yesterday so the nav light has now been disconnected from its power source, Tynan's just dealing with the trampolines and I'm going to rig up a safety barrier because we have the rope here at the moment but Rose has already crawled under it and looked off the edge so we're going to try and come up with something that's a bit more of a visual deterrent for her curious nature. Now that the Code Zero crossbeam support bar is gone, we are completely ready to bring the forklift in and start trying to undo those bolts and get this crossbeam out. Just to see how long they needed to be. Um, 
because we're people are thinking they're not going to be long enough once we've reinforced everything. And it was so hard to get off because it had been cross thread. Oh my god, don't hit them out here, hit me in the head. But these ones have been way easier to get out. Do you want me to pull them? Yeah, they're really easy. You're not as magic as you think you are, as it turns out. I pull a rabbit out of my hat. <laughs> it's not a rabbit, that's the luck dragon. Stroke it. What are you doing, sweetie? We've pulled all four bolts out of the starboard side, but it's still holding there. So it seems like the secret flex or whatever is just holding it there a little. So we're going to cut that and then lower that side onto the platform. We've now removed all eight bolts holding the cross beam to the hull, but it's still just sitting there because of the sealant. It's just stuck. So we're going to keep at it with these spatulas. You come out to supervise, have you? They've repaired the box section after the fact, which you can see in the previous video. So the metal bracket has gel coat standing out past it, so it doesn't want to come out of the gel coat. We've been at this for quite a few hours now, but as you can see behind me, cross beam is still in. Uh, part of the problem we found is that when they did some of the gel coat repairs in Cape Town, it looks like some of the gel coat's holding it on as well as the sealant. What we don't want to have happen, get blamed for damage that wasn't actually us, but they think that it's us because of how it was done. So we're going to stop, we're going to get some more advice about how to proceed, and once we've got that, then we can look at moving forward. But for now, We've just popped a couple of bolts back in and we're going to leave it. This morning we are heading to customs again. So one of the benefits of being here in Trinidad as a yacht in transit is you can get almost everything you need for the boat imported. And when you do it as a yacht in transit, there's no import duties or taxes or VAT or online tax to worry about. So it offsets the cost of trying to import the stuff, which is really handy because a lot of really specific items that you need, they're just not locally available. So we're heading down to customs. They just have a copy of your boat paperwork, your passport. We have a letter from the captain, which is technically Trent, to say that we can get the stuff. And then they just usually get us to open all the boxes, have a look, and that's it. So today, there should be a spare switch for the Luma and a couple of new Victron batteries for us. We're not even halfway there yet. <laughs> you look so depressed. Well, whilst you do a custom thing when you go to the bar, <laughs> and then you can just text me when you're done. As a lot of people find, it really does depend on who you get, but there is a couple of really cool people who work here so they don't hold you up that much, so we're usually in and out relatively quickly. Successfully picked up the batteries. Today, for some reason, Customs wanted a copy of the boat registration instead of the letter, but whatever, I've learnt to take lots of copies of everything. But basically these two batteries, along with the three solar panels we've got on order, will be the last things that we add to our electrical system before we can head across the Pacific. So at the moment we've got seven 400 watt panels. We're adding three more smaller panels to the helm roof that go into our 48 volt lithium battery banks. So all of this is coming together to mean that 
we can use a lot of electricity without having to be super conservative which suits us because we like our Starlink and I love my air fryer. Tonight I have the boat to myself because Trent and Tynan have headed off to a pan yard to go and watch the steel drums which is one of the big um, cultural art things that happens here in Trinidad. I've stayed back because I have some things I want to do plus it's nice to have a night to myself and you know I thought girls night but the other participant of my girls night is very unwilling shall we say. Did they leave without you? Do you want to come and hang out? You want to hang out? Rose? You want to come inside? And once again, I've been rejected by a three-year-old dog. <laughs>